Hello, in this video we are going to be implementing a scoring system because up till now we have a bird that flies which is cool, we got land moving, we got pipes spawning and moving, we can avoid the pipes and if we crash into them it does flash white and it does go to essentially game over. But we don't have a scoring system at the moment so it's a bit boring so what we want to do is implement that now. First of all go to your pipe system, you might be thinking why are we doing something in pipes and the reason for that is we're going to be sporing, spawning a scoring pipe, which is what we'll be using to detect if the bird has gone through well the pipes or in between the pipes. So we're going to call this spawn scoring pipes. And we want a method for getting the. And this won't be a const because we'll need to be doing some stuff with these scoring pipes. So this is going to be get scoring sprites. And we need a vector of scoring pipes. So scoring pipes. And now what we're going to do is go to the cpp file so in pipe.cpp scroll up constructor that is it okay and if we scroll down to where we've got spawn invisible pipe if we duplicate this this will be the spawn scoring pipe so spawn scoring pipes actually this should be called spawn scoring pipe why would, did it say pipe or pipes? Ah, my bad. That is a mistake on my part. So this should be pipe. You could obviously call it whatever you want, but it doesn't make sense. It should be spawn scoring pipe. So we got a sprite, which is fine, but it's actually going to be using the scoring pipe. This is just basically one that's in the full height. And now, and it's obviously got no color to it as well, no color values, therefore you can't see it. And for setting the position, so we want to get the x value, that's fantastic. For the y value, we're just going to set it to zero because we want it to be start at the top and fill the entire height of the screen. We don't need to set any sort of color value. And for this, instead of pushing it back onto pipe sprites, I'm going to push it back onto scoring pipes, like so. And now, if we scroll down, so we got the move pipes, which is pretty cool. But we also need something very similar for the scoring pipes. So if we replace everything or everywhere where we have pipe sprites with scoring pipes, like so. So we are checking if the scoring pipes position is less than zero minus the scoring pipes width. That is fine. We are going to be erasing it because we it's off the screen. We can get rid of it. Uh, else we are going to be moving it. So pipe movement speed times dt. This is essentially the same. It's just a pipe that you won't be able to see. So as far as the user is concerned, the player, they won't actually see any of this stuff at all so we, we don't actually need to draw it we just need to move it which is what we are doing so randomize pipe offset we don't need to deal with that so we got a get sprites method so we want something similar for the scoring pipe so we can get rid of the const here and over here and this is going to be scoring pipes this is get scoring sprites like so. So now that we've added the extra methods to our pipe class, go to your game state .hpp, and what we want is a score value. So int underscore score. So this will keep track of the user score. So every time they go through the pipes and collide with the invisible scoring pipe, this will increment. So if you go to your constructor, and actually I forgot to do one thing and can you guess what it is try and guess if you didn't if you did fantastic if you didn't doesn't matter I forgot to if we go to here we got the load texture stuff I forgot to 
assign the value of the scoring pipe to the invisible score, create a definition for the invisible scoring pipe. So we go to definitions, again, just the same stuff as usual. So we just copy and paste this one. So this is going to be called scoring underscore pipe underscore file path. And this is invisible, probably end up misspelling this, scoring pipe, like so. Now in here, we can just duplicate one of these, put scoring pipe here, so scoring pipe. This was called pipe underscore, I uh, know it was invisible. What was it called? Have I seriously already forgot what it's called? Scoring pipe file path. So I tried that, it didn't work. Well, it's gonna work now. So scoring pipe file path, that is fantastic. The one last thing we need to do in the constructor is set the score to zero, like so. In the handle input, we don't need to do anything at all. In the update method, this is where sort of the magic is gonna happen. So we need a, another spawn pipe, but we're gonna be scoring the invisible pipe, which happens to be our scoring pipe. That is the whole reason it was created and implemented. So we got collision detection over here. We wanna do something similar for the scoring pipes. So if we duplicate all of this code, so we have this, this is gonna be an ampersand scoring sprites. This is going to be get scoring sprites, like so. So we got a reference to it, which is pretty cool. And we are going to loop over it. So if the scoring sprite size, just the typical stuff. So we're going to check the sprite collision. So bird gets sprite 0.625f. You want this to match up with what you've done here. And 0.1.0f for the scoring sprites like so now in here this is where we would handle all of the stuff that we need to handle so underscore score we would increment score which is pretty cool we would just see out the score so see out underscore score std and line and we would do scoring sprites scoring sprites dot erase and we're going to pass in scoring sprites dot begin so where it begins and then which one we want to delete and the reason that is the reason why we have a reference here and we're not returning a const because we want to be able to delete it from here instead of calling a method and passing in some sort of identifier to figure out which one we have to delete this is just a easier and better solution so what i'm going to do is get rid of it from the maximization window and run it and you'll be able to see the console now so let me just open up the console run the application click play and as soon as i go through the first pipe it will print out one so we got actually it printed out nothing so clearly something is wrong there so let me figure out what is happening so we have scoring sprites dot size so it, it could be a multitude of things but let's have let, let's go through it let, let's see if we can figure it out so we got scoring sprites get scoring sprites that looks fine we are looping over the scoring sprites we are checking if the collision is with the bird and scoring sprites dot at again that looks fine if so, what I'm actually going to do is put an std see out here. So to see if it's actually even getting in here, because if it's not, then clearly there are no pipes spawning. So if I click play, so that should have run, but that didn't run by the looks of it. So if I run it again, open up the console click play
Okay, so this clearly, clearly there aren't. So we got spawn invisible pipe, which is fantastic. Now let's go back to our invisible pipe method. So we go to pipe.cpp. This is part of programming, debugging, and finding out what has gone wrong. So if we go to spawn invisible pipe, and we are doing getting sprite, get texture. Ah, we're doing pipe up. That's the problem right there. This should be scoring pipe. And the reason that was the issue, we can't actually go through the physical pipes. We can only go in between them. And therefore, because we wasn't going through it, which was happened to be the pipe that we can only collide with, it wasn't picking it up. So now, see, something like that, something so simple can mess it up. So spawn invisible pipe, ah. I, I just want to make sure, no, actually, no. My bad, that was, okay, so that, this was fine. I was looking at the wrong method, so spawn scoring pipe, get texture, scoring pipe, set position, is the window get size.x, that's fine. We got zero, scoring pipe dot pushback, sprite, so I'm gonna see out this. So STD C out STD N line. So just make sure it's even getting into this method. So now let's run it. Don't know why I did that. I was not meant to die whatsoever. Click run. Play. So yeah doesn't even seem to be getting into here so this is definitely the console just to make sure that I haven't got something else open instead but clearly ah I see the issue I put spawn invisible pipe instead of spawn scoring pipe uh, my bad so let me get rid of any extra C outs that I had I did I I put a C out here, get rid of that. I'm very confident it's gonna work. Now see something simple like that can mess things up. So that's just a great learning exercise. So open the console up, click play, and now when we go in between the pipes, we should have a score of one. So one, two, and let's crash. Two. And it says three. So that is it really so we have drawn the pipes uh, i mean the invisible pipe we've done everything that we read well we needed to do but there's one last thing we need to do because did you notice something when we ran the game you may have noticed it if i click play and i go through one of the, one of the set of pipes so we score and now i'm going to collide with the pipes because the actual pipe is the same size, it is saying that it's technically colliding with it. So what we're gonna do is the scoring sprites section, we're gonna enclose that in an if statement. So if game state e plane, so if the current game state is the playing game state, then we would do all of this. You might be thinking, oh, we essentially did this check up here. And you're right, we did. But remember, it can go to game over if they collide with the pipes here. So this could ne potentially never be triggered within this little section of code. And that's exactly what we want. So if I click play now, and let's go through one of the pipe sets. And we're through, it says one, and see, it does not print out the score that has been updated, because it hasn't been updated, which is fantastic. In the next video, we are going to be covering how to actually display the score, because we don't want it in a command line. So go and check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link to the GitHub page, which has all the source code from every part in this course. 
and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day